Go back in time to the wonderful 1970s when classrooms buzzed with the sound of bells, the smell of mimeograph ink, chalkboards, and black backpacks. But there are many other familiar school artifacts that have not stood the test of time but will always be remembered. Let's start with the lunch ladies. Do you recall the pleasant lunch lady who formerly served dubious dishes in the cafeteria? Hairnet, disposable gloves, and all-white uniforms have been the distinctive traits of women working in school cafeterias since the beginning of public lunches. People associate school lunch with the smells of recycled meatloaf and sloppy joes, unchanged sized bottles of milk in two flavors, and stale bread. The lunch ladies used to cook for the entire school and release a weekly menu, making lunchtime a cherished part of the day. However, nowadays, lunch ladies simply heat pre-made food, which is less desirable. Students may even use a self-service kiosk or vending machine instead of waiting in the lunch line to pick up their trays. In the late 1970s, Velcro folders were popular and helped students stay organized from class to class. During the back-to-school season, parents flooded the aisles with school supplies in a desperate and frantic attempt to acquire every item on the teacher's list. Almost every school supplies list will mention a folder, but no three-ring folder can compete with the Trapper Keeper, the finest school folder ever produced. With their unique compartments, pockets, amusing patterns, and distinctive Velcro closure, these organizing vessels of greatness would come to characterize the childhoods of many in the 1970s, 1980s, and much of the 1990s. This organizer is a must-have for every high school student. The vibrant patterns feature brilliantly colored art, cute pets, fast vehicles, and more, making it easy to choose your favorite for the school year. Trapper Keepers, available in blue, green, and red, are ideal for organizing notes and assignments. Despite teacher resistance, Trapper Keepers evoke nostalgic childhood memories. The mimeograph machine appeared around the same time as hot metal typesetting, a technique used in newspaper printing where metal was melted into various letter forms. The mimeograph, a stencil machine with an ink roller, produced duplicates by pressing ink through perforations in a wax master page. This was advantageous for schools due to its low cost and ease of use. Some people recall mimeographs with a particular odor, but what they remember is the ink of the Spirit Duplicator, a similar machine that existed alongside the mimeograph. The ink used in Spirit Duplicators comprised methanol and isopropanol, which gave off a pleasant fragrance. This aroma is strongly embedded in the recollection of individuals who worked on the machine. The mix of brilliant purple ink and nostalgic aroma enhance the appeal and enjoyment of utilizing the spirit duplicator. The Ditto Machine, a critical tool in classrooms, employed an alcohol solution to transfer written pictures onto copy paper, providing invaluable assistance for decades. Do you recall the sound of the bell ringing through the school, signifying the conclusion or start of a class or recess? There are several sorts of bells all of which are intended to bring our attention to something essential, including prayer bells, alarm bells, fire alarms, and doorbells. But the most unique bell has to be the school bell. Schools in the 1970s lacked automatic electrical bells that signaled the end of each session. They had a physical bell, a circular metallic ring dangling from a tree directly over the schoolyard. At the appointed moment, the school's bell in charge would approach the bell and hit it with another metal rod, which he would then carry back with him. The bell rang loudly and clearly and could be heard from every part of the campus. The bell rang differently for each activity, class changes, lunch, recess, and the conclusion of the school day. As schools transitioned to digital systems, students eagerly awaited recess bells are being replaced by digital tones or pre-recorded remarks to signal class time. The rules regarding what students wear to gym classes vary by school. They were a sign of school pride and brotherhood, allowing students to sweat without damaging their school clothes. During the 1970s, schools had loose clothing restrictions. The outfit, tightly cinched at the waist with elastic and adorned with a row of cold metal snaps from neck to crotch, was intended to make everyone look consistently the same. It was simply a baby onesie repurposed for teenagers. Whether you were short and voluptuous, a big bone athlete, or a slender 5'9", the gym outfit would bring you down to size. High schools had strict dress codes for gym class, expecting students to change in the locker rooms. The term gym uniform may not accurately convey this requirement, but purchasing school workout gear can increase consistency. Does anyone recall this glue in a bottle? We utilized this extensively in the classroom, but the design could have been better. After usage, the glue often clogged the red top, 
and the next time you tried to use it, it would take you 10 minutes to unclog it with scissors. At that time, there were no health and safety concerns, so you just had to get on with it, even if it required extreme measures. The adhesive was best used by rubbing it over your hands and letting it dry before peeling it off. Schools now feature interactive whiteboards that save instructors a lot of time by preserving their written work, similar to how computers do. The blackboard could only be used once, and the valuable information written on it would have to be erased to make room. Every youngster enjoyed being picked to write on the chalkboard and use the eraser. It was enjoyable to use, but there was always the naughty child who wrote a curse word on it when no one was watching. Just 20 years ago, any instructor could throw a blackboard eraser at any misbehaving student. Didn't you just want to take that pencil down and utilize this amazing invention on your teacher's desk? They were perfect for using the whirring sounds as your pencil rotated, and you could watch the pencil shavings fall into the small glass receptacle at the bottom. Your instructor immediately realized that after one student had successfully sharpened their pencil and gotten away with it, the entire class would hammer their pencils on their desk to flatten them so they could have a turn. Do you remember that old heavy backpack full of textbooks and the Olympic feat of carrying it up the stairs to your class? It was like dragging a boulder, and it was a test of strength back in those days. Some schools provided pre-printed covers to protect the books from wear and tear over the years. Students were allowed to wrap them in brown paper bags. Securing the covers around the books was practical and personal. Paper used to be a canvas for doodles and memories, but the disappearance of physical school books, the need for book covers has faded. Although more convenient, the experience of wrapping our school books remains memorable. With the advancement of technology, many schools have transitioned to digital textbooks or online resources. School Corporal Punishment, which gained popularity in the late 1800s and early 1900s, is a physical disciplinary approach for correcting student disobedience. A district administrator or principal usually paddles pupils when this technique is utilized. Decades ago, getting into trouble in school led to corporal punishment in some schools. Some schools utilized wooden paddles, which made it more intimidating. The sight of the properly drilled paddles served as a reminder to respect the regulations. Schools increasingly prioritized positive reinforcement over negative consequences, reflecting a shift towards progressive discipline approaches. At the start of each school year, the library is a calm haven for book lovers, once a shelter for wisdom. The Dewey Decimal System made discovering books easier by organizing them for rapid searches, provided you understood how to use it. Previously, you had to consult the card catalog to locate a book. Today's pupils are unlikely to be aware of the Dewey Decimal System, as they no longer have to dig through little drawers to find a certain book. Computers have eliminated the need for a card catalog, allowing access to anything with a simple keyboard shortcut. School libraries have transitioned from checkout cards to media centers, using less books and barcode scanning technology, while preserving the charm of meeting friends. Keep the inspiration alive and share your memories. Clean out those yearbooks, get out those old textbooks, and let's remember the school things of the 1970s that have vanished but will never be forgotten. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button and remember to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of our videos.